guest star to your presentation. My presentation is about weaving design fundamentals. A woven cloth is formed by the interlacement of two sets of threads, namely, warp and weft threads. These threads are interlaced with one another according to the type of weave or design. The warp threads are those that run longitudinally along the length of the fabric and the weft threads are those that run transversely across the fabric. For the sake of convenience the warp threads are termed as ends and the wifts as picks or fillings. Now let's move to classification of woven structures. Woven structures are classified into the following categories, simple structures and compound structures. In case of simple structures, there is only one series of warp and weft threads. These threads interlace with one another perpendicularly. All the neighborhood warp and weft threads are parallel to one another and play an equally important role in determining the properties of the fabric. In case of compound structures, there may be more than one series threads, of which one set forms the body or ground and the other forms the figuring or ornamentation. Unlike the simple structures, the neighborhood threads need not be parallel to one another. You are going very well. Please proceed your presentation. Now I will tell you about methods of weave or design representation. A weave is the interlacing pattern of the warp and weft. Two kinds of interlacing are possible. First one is warp overlap in which warp is above weft. And second one is weft overlap in which weft is above warp. For representation of weave or design a squared paper is employed, on which each vertical space represents a warp thread and each horizontal space represents a weft thread. Each square therefore indicates an intersection of warp and weft thread. To show the warp overlap, a square is filled in or shaded. The blank square indicates that the weft thread is placed over the warp that is weft overlap. Several types of marks may be used to indicate the warp overlap. The X mark is most commonly used. Now what is a weave repeat? The repeat of a weave is a quantitative expression of any given weave. It indicates the minimum number of warp and weft threads for a given weave. It comprises of warp and weft repeat. The size of the repeat may be even or uneven depending upon the nature of the weave. In elementary weaves such as plain, twill, satin etc. the repeat size is normally even. However in weaves such as honeycomb and huckyback the repeat size may be even or uneven. For any weave the repeat size is the sum of the warp and weft floats. Thus in case of a 2 over 1 twill the repeat size is 3 by 3. It is common practice to denote one repeat of a weave on design paper. Now moving on to basic elements of weave design. The three basic elements in a woven design are, design, draft or drawing plan and finally peg or lifting plan. The design indicates the interlacement of warp and weft threads in the repeat of the design. It is made up of a number of squares, which constitute the repeat size of a design. The draft or drawing plan indicates the manner of drawing the ends through the heeled eyes and it also denotes the number of heeled shafts required for a given weave repeat. The choice of the type of drafting plan depends upon the type of fabric woven. The peg or lifting plan provides useful information to the weaver. It denotes the order of lifting of heel shafts. In a peg plan the vertical spaces indicate the heel shafts and the horizontal spaces indicate the picks. The peg plan depends upon the drafting plan. Very well done your presentation is extraordinary. Now I will tell you about types of draft plan. The various drafts are classified as straight, pointed, skip and satin, broken, divided, grouped, and combination. In next presentation I will explain all these types of draft plans in detail. That's all from my presentation. Thank you for watching.